Oh, hey all, we're talking here. Since the whole space wormhole thing, I've been overdue to my house payments, which, you know, naturally caused me to get evicted. So now I live in a tent, in a public park, in a town that has a decline of rubbish bins. You know, it's kind of fine here. Other than my tree-hugging neighbor who keeps throwing random garbage at me. Back! Look, I said I was sorry for saying the Wormwood texture was ugly, which I'm right in. So let's just get along, right? I'll be here for a while, you know. <sighs> Anyways, it's Christmas. A perfect time for me to capitalize on Gifts. I mean, talk about Gifts Explosion. Gifts Explosions, the good old tradition where Roblox would release gifts with cryptic descriptions onto the catalog for players to deduce to obtain, or otherwise buy if they didn't meet the requirements. Last year, I talked about Gifts Explosion 2007, so logically continuing from that front, I'll talk about 2008. But looking at the amount of content in Gift Explosion 2008, that's it? I, I can't make a somewhat long video on that. So with that conclusion, I'm also lobbying in Gift Explosion 2009 and some other extra oddities from the same year into this video. We'll be taking a look at each year's gifts, talking about their objectives in an in-depth matter, and of course, revealing each gift's prize. It'll be a pretty cool experience. So grab some hot cocoa that's preferably hot, and a blanket to keep cozy, and let's get on with it, eh? After a year from Gift Explosion 2007, the Roblox community weren't really expecting any sort of continuation. Historically, the only events at the time to get consecutive sequels were the Halloween Treasure Hunt events, whilst contests and other seasonal events took center stage for each year. I mean, there were people who were practically begging for the event's return, and there was a gift in February and October, which could hint at something. But realistically, where could that possibly go? So it was met with everyone's surprise that on December 5th, a GIF appeared in people's inventories, along with a blog post posted by Shaletsky announcing the return of GIF Explosion. And so began GIF Explosion 2008, starting on December 5th with the first GIF being handed out, then ending on December 23rd with the last GIF unboxing into an item. A total of 7 GIFs were released onto the catalog, which is somewhat strange seeming that this is less of a GIF total than the event last year, but all to who I guess. Gift Explosion 2008 followed the same formula as its predecessor, with gifts being handed out to those who meet the requirements told by the descriptions in the style of hints and cryptic descriptors, then eventually going on sale for a set varying price for those who didn't meet those requirements. A standard continuation of last year's event. But by looking at whatever old community reactions I could find, this event seemed to be really popular, which intrigues me. How could an event that's objectively inferior to last year's installment be more popular than said installment? Hopefully with looking at the gifts, we can deduce if it's because of more well thought objectives that explore some newer features, or generally better designed gifts and items that will become iconic with the community. Anywho, we won't find anything out by just sitting around, so let's start looking into these gifts. As mentioned, each gift had a special cryptic description which alluded to a requirement for the players to follow in order to grab the gift for free. These descriptions can vary in difficulty, either being really easy or really hard to obtain. After the gifting period ends, each gift was put on sale for a select amount of Robux. I'll list the prices in the corner of each gift I talk about, but keep in mind Robux was drastically way more valuable back in 2008 compared to now, even with the whole tickets to Robux exchange system being introduced only a month prior to the event. So if the prices seem really low to you, just know that those prices in today's Robux economy would probably be inflated to high hell. I'll also list the release date and other relevant information for each gift as we go along. So let's get started, eh? First, the Crimson Gift of Good Citizenship. This gift was the gift that surprised a lot of players on December 5th when it first appeared in their inventories. The gift has a mahogany red colored exterior with a bright silver ribbon, a basic but really nice color scheme. The promotional image for this gift showcased it having a brighter red color to its box, which you could just kind of chuck it up to it being rendered weird in whatever 3D modeling software Roblox used to create this gift, Polly Autodesk Maya. 
I have to say, however, that I much rather prefer the final color scheme it took, compared to the more brightish red the promotional image had. The description read, You received this gift if you had logged in since December 1st and you had no moderation actions against you in this past month. Pretty straightforward for what's supposed to be a clue, but this gift served as a freebie that any player could earn. As long as you weren't banned or worn during November and logged in sometime during the last few days of December, you would have received this gift for free. A standard evolution of last year's shiny blue gift of niceness. Next, the chancy gift of Rochambeau. Rochambeau has always seemed like a funky word to me, anyone else? What's also funky is this texture, with one side of the gift box having a weird slate-like grey brownish texture that looks like it has cave paintings on it, whilst the other side has this abstract wood grain texture with lines that look nonsensical. All of this tied together with an out of place pink hue ribbon. Funky, right? But I honestly can't help but love it. I don't know, it's weird but it has its own sense of style. The description read, You had to beat Telemon at rock paper scissors to win this gift. The gif had a theme of RPS, with the whole Rochambeau title and beating Telemon on rock paper scissors thing, so its requirement followed suit of that theme with the player needing to have the word paper somewhere in their profile bio as a response to Telemon's challenge. After doing so, the gif will appear in your inventory, acting as some kind of response from Telemon. Kind of unfair as he effectively has several days to respond to your paper, but who knows what the result could be. Going along, the liquidated gif of mercantilism, really showing Roblox's capitalistic materialism with this one, huh? I mean, the gif is quite literally brandished with a repeating texture of the old robux and ticket icons on a black canvas. And to complete the whole fancy rich theming, the ribbon that wraps the gif is gold. Pretty gaudy, but it's one of the few gifts with an actual pattern, which looks nice. The description read, A gif wrapped in money? Now that's classy. Remember that exchange system I briefly mentioned? The player had to use that system at least once to obtain the gif. Honestly, another freebie because the exchange system was probably really popular back during this period, as it was just only introduced. Additionally, people would take any chance to get Robux for trading their old stash of tickets, which makes me think that this gift was probably mass collected during this time. Really good objective honestly, as it showcases our new feature only just introduced. Next, the neon gif of actualization. The gift's box has a bright, pure yellow color with a texture that kind of reminds me of melted cheese. It's weird to say that right, but it, it's kind of similar, you, you just gotta saturate the cheese a bit. Like there's even divots and rises in the texture that make it look like a substance. The ribbon takes a reflective white color with pastel pink and blue highlights, which complement the overall highlighted yellow box pretty well. The description read, A GIF ANYONE CAN ATTAIN. If only they believe it is possible. Very abstract hint, but this description led to the comment section of the GIF itself. Nowadays, official Roblox items don't have comments enabled. It's been like that for a while now. But back then, almost all items in the catalog had comments enabled by default. This even stretched the games as well. All the player had to do was just to leave a comment in the description of this GIF box to grab the GIF. Now, the tragic GIF of reparations. This GIF does something quite unique, as it uses a brand new base mesh unseen before this event. I mean, it's, it's the same gift box model, but it includes this tag now, which is really neat. The box has this kind of orange, cartoonish lava texture, which slowly fades into black the farther the texture strays away from the middle of the top part of the box. The ribbon takes a crimson red color, which contrasts heavily with the subdued black parts of the box, whilst also blending with the orange parts of the box pretty steadily. It makes the overall hard to look at composition, which I can't really help but see as ugly. The new addition being this tag on top of the box has this cartoonishly gritty paper texture that looks really rough, or almost like sandpaper, which only further cartoonishly complements itself with a comic sans font stating sorry, signed by Telemon. At this point, I can't really tell if he's sorry for this awful box design or for the ejective. Speaking of which, the description read, Telemon is so sorry for blocking you. Here's something shiny. This description gives clear detail that the player had to be blocked by Telemon at one point presumably in a brick battle or sword fighting game like Sword Fight on Heights, for example. This gift acts as an apology for Telemon killing you. I don't know how one would be able to open this gift if they're, you know, dead, but I guess it's the fort that counts. This gift acts as a kind of reverse for the Black Iron gift from last year, where instead of blocking people, you get blocks instead. Going along now, the royal gift of kings. He never seems to go away, huh? The GIF has a vibrant purple box, which fits well with the theme since purple as a color has always had an extensive history with it being associated with royalty. To top it off, the GIF is wrapped with a ribbon of gold, which displays a more accurate portrayal of the gold color compared to the lucrative GIF's ribbon. Who has the more class now, huh? Anywho, the description read, another loyalty. If the snobbish name and parallels to the golden egg of clowns isn't enough, this GIF is drawing mentions to how the player had to have a crown in their inventory. The list of crowns that are applicable for this GIF is pretty extensive, including items that are on the cheaper side. There's some event items here as well, like the Ice Crown or Domino Crown. 
Heck, you could even use the Golden Egg of Kings itself to grab this gift. I guess he really is considered loyalty, despite how snobbish he is. Lastly, the Barrel Gift of Ambassadors. The gift box has this really nice looking ice texture that looks really good. Especially with all the dark cracks in between and... Wait a second. Isn't this just a huge shifted bombastic print? You know what, on second thought I don't really like this design. The description read, This gift was awarded to Roblox's most successful ambassadors. This gift had to do with the... Roblox Inviter Badge. Not an ambassador. That was introduced off out of a year later in April of 2009. The Inviter Badge had players encourage others unfamiliar to Roblox to sign up. Back then, during 2007-2014-ish, the register page on Roblox had this neat little text box where you could put your friend's username as a person who recommended you to play Roblox. Having your username be put into that text box for a separate time to reward you with the Inviter Badge. The gift basically had the player needing to own this badge to obtain it for free. So yeah, pretty cool. Now with all the gifts out of the way, I like to say that all these objectives feel pretty much aligned with 2007's objectives, as it didn't really do anything to improve on those requirements. Only really rehashing certain ideas, and when even innovating, they're not really going too far off from the 2007 roots. It's not really a bad thing, as this was only just a second installment, and Roblox was still probably just trying to find that grip on this formula. But I feel like it couldn't really hurt to see something a little bit more ambitious, especially when there's few gifts than the year before it. My favorites here are the Barrel Gift, Royal Gift, and Lucrative Gift, as those seem to do more than the Standard Bunch. They all genuinely look nice, as well as showcase new features only just introduced at the time. Huh? What do you mean criticizing a 15 year old event is unfair? Well, Rotris was just before this event, and that was probably one of the coolest events they ever made back then. So, you know, I, I thought it would have been cool if they carried over that level of innovation. Oh, come on. Quick play about something you probably don't even like. As said before, each gift box gave out a prize after the sale period ends. The cool thing about this is that you get to keep the gift boxes that the prize came out of, essentially giving you two items for each gift you earn. I mean, people probably won't choose the big old wacky box over the actual item, but it's really nice to have these collectibles, you know? Each item from this year's gift explosion is going limited, which allows these exclusive collectibles to be traded around with a high value. I'll be listing the parent item's gift name in the corner along with a rough pricing outline of their limited state as to show how much they've grown in value from their original gift price. There'll also be a accompanying date that will show when the box was opened, as they vary with each gift's release. So with that out of the way, the Crimson Gift of Good Citizenship opened into... The Racing Helmet, a really nice looking item. It doesn't completely fit the head of a Robloxian, but it covers it enough to where it hides the face and the head details of the character. I really like its style, especially when it draws its inspirations from accessory pieces of LEGO characters from older LEGO sets. The black visor and the helmet piece, along with the bright flame decals, give it a really cool color scheme too. All in all, a pretty cool item that can work in a lot of sets. Next, the chancy gift of Roshambu opened into... A pair of scissors kind of strange, but this is pretty much on par with the gimmicky items what looks were published around this time, like the lump of coal or the vegetable hat, where the main allure of these items was just to have a goofy or out of place item placed in your head. In that aspect, the pair of scissors fit pretty well, especially with its cool reflective metal texture. It almost makes up for how much pain a player would be in if they wore this item, as it kind of just sticks into the scalp of the player's head. Telemon had the last laugh after all, huh? Going into the lucrative gift of mercantilism now, the gift opened it to... It explosion. A spiral of tickets to form a kind of tornado or whirlpool coming from on top of the player's head. This was the first centrally ticket themed item published into the catalog, despite it ironically costing Robux. The main texture of the tickets on the Tick Explosion would go on to be used in other iconic ticket items, including pretty much all the accessories sold during Tick's Palooza. Pretty cool, huh? Next, the Neon Gift of Self Actualization opened into. The Fort Fortress. A really abstract concept for a hat, having the main shape of it be a skeleton of a pyramid. The color scheme is also rather unique, with the edges having a silver coloring whilst the vertices have a blue marking on their axis points, giving it a futuristic vibe. It reminds me of those old math questions that tested how many matchsticks it took to form a triangle or something. Kind of a really strange item, but its abstract style is really appealing to me. The name 2 is also really cool, despite it not really being related to the accessory itself. Continuing, the tragic gift of reparations opened into... The Helm of the Flashing Bolt, a unique warlord looking helmet that continues the series set up by the 2007 Helm of Secret Fire. In fact, there was another Helm of Elements introduced earlier this year, the Helm of Frozen North, making this helm the fun in the series. 
This helmet features a cool bright yellow lightning symbol and a slightly yellow black helmet. A really nice looking item and a great addition to the series. Going forward, the royal gift of kings opened into... The golden hat of bling bling? With all the relations to crowns or loyalty, I would have expected some sort of crown. But instead it's a tasteless top hat that's blinked to the brim with dollar signs on it. Yeah, this item's pretty iconic. Even having an equally tasteless package be published to match this hat. Only over 6 years later, but anywho, cool item overall. Finally, the barrel gift of ambassadors opened into... The Ice Skull of Nevermore. Now, this is a sick ass accessory. Using a unique shade of blue along with a really nice ice texture, as well as just generally having a really cool mesh that's based on the Red Link Skull, this item would have been already really cool enough to become a community favorite. But they went even further. They made the hat transparent, which is a really big deal as only a few Roblox accessories at the time had the luxury of being slightly transparent, such as the Ice Crown or the Invisible Egg of Shadows. This hat is one of the most unique and awesome designs Roblox has ever created. A really stellar job. All in all, the items awarded during this event feel very unique and special, with all the items feeling like they had a lot of care and effort put into them to make them look really nice. Besides maybe the scissors, those are just a pair of scissors. My favorite accessories from this batch are, of course the Ice Skull, the Fort Fortress, and the Racing Helmet. Look at you, you're wearing snot-covered wooden antlers! Look, I get that I'm supposed to be nice to you in order to get along, but you really play into your own jokes. In conclusion, I can see why the community fought really highly of this event. 2008 was a year that saw more of an influx of new players compared to 2007, which meant that this explosion served as an introduction to the event to many new people, and in my opinion, it did a really good job of that, without having any obscure or weird objectives to gifts, as well as having really well designed items for each gift. With all the really nice items and really unique gift types, this event served as a pretty good continuation of the explosion. However, there are less gifts in 2007, and most of the objectives, whilst being very simple to comprehend, are mostly just rehashes from last year, with very little in terms of new. So with all those downsides and upsides counted together, I hereby say that this event is a pretty clean 7 out of 10. I know, I know, seems pretty redundant to give it the exact same score as last year's event, but it not really innovating on anything from last year balances out all the streamlining and good lasting first impressions this event does on the formula, so it makes sense to me to give it a score that's comparable and close to last year's score, by giving it the exact same score. Huh? What do you mean this event deserves a zero? Just because it doesn't have the ugly Wanwood antlers? Again, you really are just playing into your own jokes. Maybe you look past the fact that not all events will include something related to tree hugging or wanwood. You could probably open up your eyes a bit to see that there are more good events than just Gift Explosion 2007 or Extravaganza. Heck, the fact that you're even going after something you defended earlier shows how quick switching you are. Just saying, that's all. Anyways, it's time for Gift Explosion 2009. Following a year after Gift Explosion 2008, the community were really excited to see what Roblox was cooking up in terms of gifts and prizes this year. Remember, 2008 marked a major point where lots of new players joined Roblox, so there was a lot more of expectation on what new in terms of gifts could come to Gift Explosion 2009, but most importantly, what new prizes Gift Explosion 2009 could hide. You see, 2009 was the year gears were introduced into the catalog as a wearable accessory, so players were expecting gears to appear as some sort of prizes too. Especially when Roblox already did make a gear a gift prize earlier the same year with another gift. Speaking of those, Roblox released another batch of gifts that didn't have to do with Gift Explosion. This time more so as advertising material for some site features rather than celebrating random events. Again, I won't talk about these since they're not really related to Gift Explosion. Maybe I'll bring them up in a video covering Builders Club or the Ambassador Program sometime later. Anywho, heading into December, rampant discussions were at its peak with everyone excited to see when the gifts would land in the inventory. This all accumulated on December 7th, when during the early mornings, the first gift appeared in people's inventories, marking the beginning of Gift Explosion 2009. A total of 11 gifts would release following the days of December, the final gift releasing a day after Christmas and the final prize being unboxed on New Year's Eve. 
This event would garner a lot of praise from the community, even somewhat more than Gifts Explosion 2008. But seeming as how 2008 was mostly a rehash, we have to check out the gifts first to see if this event is really deserving of all that praise. After all, there was a lot of expectation, and a lot of people back then did say that this event delivered. So without further ado, let's check out Gifts Explosion 2009. I'll be covering the 11 gifts in the same way I covered Gift Explosion 2008's gifts. You know, with the whole price in the corner or whatever. A gift did cost tickets rather than Robux during its sale period, so whenever that shows up, I'll be sure to explicitly mark it as ticket pricing. So let's get into it. First, the verified gift of legitimacy. This gift has a barely noticeable red tinted black box with a very noticeable bright lime green ribbon. A very weird and unfitting combo in my opinion. The description read, Are you bonafide? Are you verified? Could you recover your account if it was lost or stolen? A clear nod to how you had to have a verified email connected to your account. You know, with the whole name and the description having a rhetorical question and the keywords of verified and bonafide. Simply just link your email to your account and verify it with the verification message Roblox sends you. So that's a freebie that almost all players can get. I say almost because some people just tend to not keep their account safe. I like this one better than the moderation history freebie gifts, as this one feels more fair, if that makes sense. I mean, you can just get banned before a gift comes out and instantly get excluded from obtaining a gift. So having a verified email feels more free and less chancy. Next, the full spectrum gift of Group Master. God, is that a bright texture. I'm not a major fan of highly saturated colors, but to each and all I guess, as I know there's a lot of people who like these sort of eye bleeding rainbow patterns. I will say that the overly bright box does contrast well with the jet black ribbon, which does give it somewhat of a clean look compared to other gifts. This gift also includes a tag like last year's gift of reparations, this time having little AOL dudes in a circle on a black tag, like they're doing a little ring around the rosy or that spinning monkey circle meme. The description read, Nazgul, Muses, Supreme Court Judges, The Fiendmen Point, Beethoven Symphonies. Okay, let's get on our tinfoil caps for this one. How many people are on a black tag? Nine. That might not mean anything yet, but let's take a closer look at the description. Nazgul. Nazgul is a group of dark hooded ring servants that serve Sauron from Lord of the Rings, often called either the Black Riders or the Nine. Muses. Muses in Greek mythology are goddesses of literature, science, and art. How many muses are there since they're named in plural? Nine goddesses. Supreme Court Judges. Historically, the US has always had an amount of nine judges in total for Supreme Court. The Feynman point is a point in the digit pi where it repeats a certain number six times. What is that number? 9. Beethoven Symphonies Ludwig van Beethoven was a world-renowned music prodigy who writes and composes sonatas, quartets, but most importantly symphonies. How many symphonies did he write? 9. After all these hints to the number 9, what could it mean? It all pointed to the objective of the GIF, to have 9 members in a group duo. It, it was just that simple, huh? Turns out, maybe not. Groups is a feature on the platform and in July of that same year, the ability to create groups only being exclusively handed out to Builders Club members for a fee of 100 Robux. This basically means this gift was pretty much exclusively handed out to those who had a subscription, as well as 9 friends. Also only the owner gets a gift. So kind of a harsh objective, but it was unironically pretty fun to decrypt the hint in the description with this one, so I'll give it a pass on that. Already really cool that a gift is showcasing a new feature, despite its exclusivity to PC members. Going forward, the gift of Prime Nexus. Oh boy, another gift with the word Prime, this time in its name. The gift box is a very alien-like texture, with spots and divots aligning a sickening green backing texture, which slowly fades into dark the lower the box texture goes. The ribbon has this deep dark blue color which overall ties the gift together into a rather unique package, which I personally like a bit, probably because of its green coloring. The description read, so maybe this gift makes no sense. Look, not only is this hinting that the gift with the word Prime makes no sense, but it's also referencing 2007's equally nonsensical Prime Candidate gift as well! Take that, Jimmy! I probably shouldn't be saying that out loud. You know when that kid found his parents, he never contacted me? I would have at least expected a thank you for how much I provided for him while he was still classified as missing by the state police. Anyways, that was only a short to the point excerpt from the description, because honestly, the rest was just a bunch of incoherent ramblings that only add to the fact that the description was nonsensical to begin with. The objective was just to own a unique limited item with a prime number as serial. Unique limited items are special from normal limiteds, where they have a special tied value to them in the form of a serial ID, which depends on what position your item stood whenever you bought it. Just have a prime number take the serial ID's place to obtain this gift. 
I'm not going to explain why this doesn't make sense since the gif already did it itself, but I feel like people would have at least appreciated a tiny hint instead of saying whatever in this gif is probably lame. All that does is just make me think you're not confident with whatever you hit in this gif. Next, the gif of Pi Maker's Lament. This gif uses a new unique mesh, which looks pretty nice as it takes the shape of something more cylindrical compared to the total cube party we've been having for the past two years. It has a pleasant repeating snowflake pattern around its grey coloured base, with its lid having a more balloon tinted grey band around its side with a white top accent which makes the lid look like it's covered in snow. It's an overall very good design. My compliments go to the hat maker with this one, even with the minor UV map mistakes. The description read, You know those pumpkin pies everyone labelled over during Thanksgiving? They're getting stale and it's time to move that inventory. Time for a pie selling contest. Before reading further, this gif is paying homage to the Thanksgiving turkey hunt that happened during November of the same year, with it directly referencing how Mononymous the Grime was to attain the pumpkin pie prize in that game. The pie selling contest in this case means to actually sell your pumpkin pie gear in the catalog, as in between of the time when this event went live and when the turkey hunt event concluded, the pumpkin pie gear went limited. To my knowledge, selling was a feature exclusive to Builders Club members, meaning only BC people or higher can sell their pumpkin pie gears. When I thought this gift's motion was regarded for its difficulty, in the way the first gift had the phrase, this is the only easy one in its description, I didn't think you couldn't go into it without spending money. Continuing with the description, the gift said to be in the top 1000 sellers during the selling contest, which I think relates to how much robux your pies made from selling them during the contest period. I'm not really sure, but later the gift stated that you only need to sell an amount of 10 times pie or 3 when rounded to get the gift, so it wasn't so complicated after all. I don't know, I feel like owning 3 pies is a challenge already in itself. I'd rather just take the 314 robux hit to sell the 3 pumpkin pies. Honestly, a very overcomplicated objective. At least the gift is pretty nice. Okay. Please, something simple. Next, we have the... Oh no. The Akena 10's gift of unburnt glory. Akena 10 in this context is actually a misspelling or breakdown of the Egyptian pharaoh's name, Akhenaten. But for simplifying this part, we'll simply just keep saying Akena 10, since Roblox keeps repeating this version of the name. Talking about the gift itself, it's another unique gift mesh, this time taking the shape of a square-based pyramid. I like the subtle hieroglyphic patterning on the actual wrapping itself giving it a defined ancient Egyptian theme that relates to its name and shape. The only thing I could have asked for further is a colour that more so fits, because the green used on the box isn't really speaking ancient Egyptian to me. I get that ancient Egypt was never just a dry desert that's yellow all the time, but I feel like a dried sand-like slate texture would have fit better with the hieroglyphic patterning. To top the gif off, the top of the wrapping is tied with a bright red ribbon, which looks pretty neat. Okay, time for the objective. This one is strange. The description reads, Foot, Lion, Hand, Reed, Bread, Loaf. This at first, looks like nonsense, but actually, this is supposed to correspond to Egyptian hieroglyphics. I tried translating this mess, but it didn't really return anything coherent. The actual clues lie in the advertising Roblox did around the site for this specific GIF, which had hieroglyphs that the player had to translate in order to get instructions for how to attain the GIF. The instructions read, Build a pyramid for the glory of Akena 10. Those favored by Akena 10 will be rewarded. Bring us glory. These instructions led to the player to make some sort of pyramid in Roblox Studio, then publish it onto the site. The most important part was to name your game something that had a can of 10 or something close to it as the title. Only then, when waiting after you finished all the steps, you would get the GIF. Wow, th this GIF is actually very good. Clues you have to deduce, the actual objective itself, how it all ties to a theme of ancient Egypt. Amazing GIF. Ah, this one seems simpler. The frozen GIF of all that ice. This GIF uses another unique mesh. Three in a row now, we're really getting somewhere, huh? This time, the GIF box takes the shape of a literal ice cube. It doesn't even take a shape, it's just a little ice cube. They really meant it by saying all that ice, huh? The ice cube is wrapped with a red, two-segmented ribbon, which overall gives the GIF a really clean color scheme that is pleasing to look at. Overall, a really nice GIF. The description read, This space intentionally left blank. Wait. Oops. This one was hard to say, since it was grammatically incorrect to the point where it's impossible to understand what it's even trying to say. Luckily, the objective itself only had you go to the forum page of Roblox and make a post with the word ice in it. You could have posted it in any forum category, as long as it had the word ice somewhere in it. Fairly coincidental, but hey, a nice gift for an ice gif. Next, the tan gif of 10 kilo. The gift box has this kind of new yellow desert camel texturing going on, which is colored around the main ticks icon at the time. The ribbon takes this subdued yellowish peach coloring, which makes it blend a tiny bit too much into the gift's pattern for my liking. The tag on the GIF has a picture of the ticks icon that the main box texture was colored around, along with the number 10,000 in a pixelated font hovering over around the opposite corner of the ticket. All of this on the lever-like textured tag. I like this GIF, but I don't really like it, if that makes sense. 
I like the colors and the ticket theming, but on the other hand, its main texture is really ugly, plus it blends way too much with the ribbon. Maybe the ribbon was black, I think it would have been better? I don't know, it's a very much 5 out of 10 design for me. The description read, You can get it for free if you have 10,000 tickets. Or you can buy it afterward for 10,000 tickets. Very straightforward, basically saying if you own 10,000 tickets before the gift was released, you got it for free. Or, if not, you can purchase it for 10,000 tickets afterward during its sale period. Not as creative as last year's equally ticks theme lucrative gift, but I appreciate when Roblox hands out something that doesn't cost Robux for once. Afterward, the winter gift of thanks. Another new mesh, this time being a longer width box that has a shorter height. The main wrapping of the box is a pretty simple dark blue background with silver snowflake patterning, with the ribbon using the same colors as snowflakes, giving it a very simple but very good looking two color presentation. The description, or should I say card in the box read, a hearty thanks from the entire Roblox team for referring a friend to Builders Club. We've seen people who are never at the top of the referral leaderboards, but who are always there, month after month, and we wanted to give you a little something. Happy Holidays! Oh, how nice! A thanks to those who always got their names referred to by Builders Club members. Like the Invita badge system, Builders Club members had its own little refer a friend thing. This time asking a new time passenger which friend pushed them into buying a Builders Club subscription. This gift simply had you be named four separate times whenever a new time passenger was prompted with whoever referred them to the program. It's a continuation of the barrel gift, only now using an even newer system. A very nice gift to those who are probably really annoying, or good at advertising. Next. Oh boy. The double decker gift of Elven Kind. Here's the fifth and last unique mesh we'll be seeing in the event. This time being two gift boxes strapped together under a single ribbon. The bottom bigger gift has a bright red background with repeating Santas and trees sprinkled around the box, with the upper smaller gift having a white background with a repeating button and reindeer pattern. Both these are wrapped together with a bright green ribbon. If there's any gift in this event that truly spoke Christmas, it was 100% this one. Look at him, all decked out for the Xmas celebration. The description read, What's better than a GIF? Two GIFs strapped together. Not much of a clue, but we can find something further if we look into its name again. Elven Kind. Elven Kind. Elves. During that same month of gift explosion, Roblox released a collection of elf hats that are themed around the 11 different genres Roblox used at the time. The player had to own all of these in order to be applicable for the GIF. I'll go ahead and read all of these elf hat names out. So without further ado... The Adventure Elf. The Lol Elf. The Pirate Elf. The Sports Elf. The Horror Elf. The Sci-Fi Elf. The Fantasy Elf. The Modern Military Elf. This one's my favorite. The Town and City Elf. The Wild West Elf. And lastly, the Ninja Elf. Chances are, all of these elf hats were probably 15 Robux, but due to how badly these hats were documented, I can't really say for sure. But going off the assumption that these were all 15 Robux, the player would have to pay 165 Robux total to buy all these hats, or the same amount as the gift price. Meaning you could have gotten 11 cool hats, minus the horror one, and the gift instead of just simply getting the gift itself. Oh well, I guess. Cool gift though. So cool Roblox thought that they followed up this gift with basically the same gift again. Introducing the gift of the One Santa. A glossy gift that features a distinct red metallic paper wrapped box, which gives it a unique and nice looking ripple in its texture. The box is wrapped in a greater black ribbon, which gives it that classic Santa Christmassy color scheme. The description read, One Santa to rule them all, eleven Santas to find them, eleven Santas to bring them all, and in the darkness find them. I mean, at least with this one, they were more clear with the whole collect 11 hats gimmick. The GIF also went on to state what that prize would be, describing it as a very nice Santa hat, giving the player the decision to see if they really want to attempt the objective this GIF is locked behind, after knowing what sort of item could be inside. Just like the Elven Kind GIF, this GIF had the player purchase 11 different hats which all fit into the game genre's Roblox feature at the time. Just this time, instead of elf hats, it's Santa hats, as Roblox miraculously released 11 genre-specific Santa hats around the same time they released 11 genre-specific elf hats. Crazy that. So without further ado, here are the hats required for the GIF. Horror Santa, Adventure Santa, Fantasy Santa, Pirate Santa, Ninja Santa, Town and City Santa, Military Santa, again my favorite out of the bunch, Sports Santa, Western Santa, LOL Santa, and lastly, Sci-Fi Santa. Unlike the elf hats, which were more cheaply priced, each Santa hat cost 100 Robux, which equates to a total investment of 1,100 Robux. Man, I bet Santa collectors were mad when they saw the actual gift only costing 500 Robux. Well, I guess it did turn out to be a good investment, as a large majority of these Santa hats went limited and go for way higher prices now. Plus, all these hats look great, except horror. How do they always miss on the horror ones? Anyways, a very much jolly gift that draws this gift explosion closer to its end. Lastly, but certainly not the least, the stainless steel gift of December 16th. A gift after Christmas? What is this, a shameless gimmick? 
Well, actually, it's a lot more generous than that. Before we get onto that, however, this gift features an aptly corresponding gift box texture of stainless steel, which makes it look really nice and clean. And wrapped with a nice glossy deep purple ribbon? Top of the favorites list. Instantly. The description read, Given out for free to everyone who logged on on December 26, 2009. Wow, that's really nice of Roblox. After the complete difficulty hell that was the majority of this year's gifts, it was poorly granted that Roblox would give out a free gift after how much objective or money intense gifts they threw out this year compared to the previous years. Anywho, this gift gave the chaotic gift explosion 2009 a relatively peaceful and pleasant ending, which is always nice and appreciated. Looking at the gifts as a whole, the explosion 2009 really upped the ante compared to 2008 in a way where it doesn't really resemble nor carry any real standard progression that the 2008 event hinted at from last year. It's like Gift Explosion 2009 came from a different universe when Gift Explosion 2008 was more of an evolution rather than rehash, giving 2009 more of an opportunity to reach its standard evolution. This Gift Explosion had way more ambitious concepts and objectives for its gifts, branching out to really creative objectives that involve game making and newer features. This impression was already initially set up by the two prior gifts introduced earlier during the year, but with the full explosion itself, it really shows that this event can bloom into something better than just something great. Now let's move on to the prizes. Well, that was a bit. Hey, isn't that... Jimmy! Hey, I haven't seen you since last year, I think. How have you been? Um... Come to think of it, ever since the police reunited you with your mother, you haven't really thanked me yet for how much I provided for you. You know, sleeping, food, free entertainment in the form of live retrospectives. I kind of think you owe me a thank you. Uh, mom, the strange man's demanding something for me. Hey, hey that's not nice. I'm, I'm not strange. I just wanted some sort of thanks for that. Anyways, could you do something for me real quick? Can you ask your mother if I could borrow some money? I've been evicted for a while, you know. Uh... Hey, what, what's the big idea? I'm just asking for some extra change. Hey! Not now, Treva. I feel... somewhat betrayed. Like the previous explosions, you get to keep the box with every accompanying prize it opens. The format for how I go about talking about the prizes will remain the same as how I did it in Gift Explosion 2008's prize segment. However, this Gift Explosion actually has accessories that didn't go limited, meaning they're no longer purchasable nor tradable. For those, I'll list the prices off sale. Anywho, let's get on with the prizes. Starting with the verified gift of legitimacy, which opens into the perfectly legitimate business hat. This hat is iconic. And very nice. We've seen a fedora in Roblox before this gift, with the classic fedora in 2007. But with this one, you can really tell Roblox put a lot of effort into making it look clean and simple. Using the classic fedora as a comparison point, the legitimate has a simple black pinstripe pattern with a nice band giving it a classy and professional color scheme, compared to the classic straight black. It's clear why this fedora remains so popular today, as it looks really good without being too overbearing on its design, feeling like a standard modern take on the classic fedora. Overall, a really good hat. Next, the Full Spectrum GIF of Group Master opened it to... The Full Spectrum Group Master Headband. This is a reskin of the Builder Master Headband which came from Gift Explosion 2007. And those who watched my video on that event would know, I don't really like this accessory that much, as it doesn't really fit with the gift it came with, nor it looked that good in my opinion. With this one, at, at least they rectify one of those problems. I guess, instead of having a brown band, this hat stays true to the gift it came with, and has its band take its color from the full spectrum. Additionally, instead of having a building badge icon on its headplate, it instead has a friendship badge, which makes it more relevant to its objective and name. I do like the more brightened up spectrum palette on the band better than the stock brown, but that alone isn't enough to make me feel like it's still a bit underwhelming, especially for such an extravagant objective like this one. Continuing, the gift of Prime Nexus opened it to... Um, your head, a marshmallow, floating in hot chocolate. Unique name, but hey, this item's really cute. 
The accessory, when worn, overtakes your head and replaces it with a mug of hot cocoa, with a little marshmallow floating atop showcasing a sweet smile as it slowly melts into the hot cocoa. I like the detail in the hat, with the hot cocoa being textured in a very convincing way, and the marshmallow having a mix of a pleasant smile along with shading that conveys it's actually in pain. The only thing that's kind of strange is the mug, which has a pretty strange shape that you wouldn't really see on a normal everyday mug. But each day one, I guess, I think it helps make the hat more fitting on the Roblox character. Very good item, and surprisingly very cheap. I guess it was easier to post such a gift like this rather than doing its non-objective. Moving on, the gift of Pie Maker's Lament opened to... The Fruitcake! This is our first gear prize that we'll be talking about, which means I'll be talking about this item differently compared to the standard accessories. I'll start with the visuals, then I'll talk about the gear's function and what it does. Then I'll do my standard opinion stuff, you know? Anyways, a fruitcake is a dessert item that consists of cake and candy fruit. Hence, you know, the fruitcake. Fruitcake is commonly eaten during the Christmas season, which is why Roblox decided to put it as a prize for one of the gifts. The fruitcake itself consists of, well, a fruitcake, cut into a wheel shape, as well as a festive dish with a little selfie for Santa with love from Selfie and Sam written on it, along with a little nice painted tree. I'm not sure who the Sam and Sophie are, but I think Santa appreciates them making a little nice fruitcake for him. The gear itself functions as a throwable weapon. I use the term weapon lightly. This is just more so a throwable item than a weapon, as it does no damage. Once thrown, the fruitcake will spin around whilst in the sky for a short period of time. After that period ends, the fruitcake loops back like a boomerang. Or so the script says, as this gear is functionally broken. Just kind of flops on the ground, I guess? It also won't be thrown at your cursor's position for whatever reason. Why is this always an issue with every gear? Oh no, such a weird item that's not worth the effort people went through to get it. Like, the pumpkin pie is better functionality and compatibility wise since at least that one works. The fruitcake looks nice visually at least. Going forward, the Akana 10's gift of unburnt glory opened into... The Pyramid of the Sun King. This accessory, thematically, is very good, as it follows the original gift's objective and concept very well, being a cool looking pyramid. However, actually wearing it leaves something to be desired. I know putting random objects on the player's head was the rage back then, like I literally talked about a pair of scissors earlier, but this one just kind of feels unfitting. Not in a figurative sense, where it doesn't fit in with Roblox, unfitting more so on the character as it kind of looks weird on the player's head. They try to put a band underneath the pyramid to make it feel more like a hat that fits on the head, but it doesn't really help. It's strange how this one feels off to me, since the Fort Fortress feels very in line with a good accessory. It just kind of looks like a really angular straw cone. Overall, neat, but visually lacking. Afterward, the Frozen Gift of All That Ice opened into... The Silver Snowflake. A thematically really sick gear. You thought I was gonna say cool and nice, huh? Since it's a snowflake. I like to think of this gear as a winter snowflake version of the more so recognizable silver shuriken. Functionally, they're both the same, throwable shurikens that deal damage on contact and can stick to any surface if uncareful. However, I like the snowflake design a lot more than the stock shuriken. Little sharp daggers protruding from a blue vortex like center, it looks very awesome. Again, it's low hanging fruit, I'm not doing that pun. Unfortunately, this gear, like the fruitcake, is also broken only being thrown in the direction of the origin point in the world. Meanwhile, the shuriken gets to keep its mouse compatibility, which is lame. Overall, a really straight to the point sweet gear that came from a very simple gif. Next, the tan gif of 10 kilo opened to... The big bag of ticks plus bomb, one of the few gears in this event that still functionally works. The design itself takes the shape of a cartoonish money bag, with the ticket icon being brandished bright and clear on the front of the design. Visually simple and clean, the big bag of ticks part. So, what does the plus bomb mean in its name? Well, the function of this gift works similar to the fuse bomb, where the bag of ticks after being used would be set on the ground, giving a short time frame for anyone to run away for it before it explodes to a big explosion of tickets, killing anyone in its vicinity. Really putting the explosion in the explosion, huh? A really nice item that I really like, as it's simple and fits into what Roblox would do at the time, making random items dangerous and explosive. Continuing, the wintry gift of thanks opened into... The Sub-Zero Ski Specs, a pair of goggles which the player wears over their eyes to protect them on the ski slopes. I don't really like this item, as it looks goofy in an unintended way, like perhaps it's a little too low on the face maybe? It looks more like swimming goggles that you'll wear at the pool rather than ski specs. It's telling that this item is one of the more cheaper limiteds from this event. Not exactly sure if this was a really good thank you item, but eh, whatever. Moving on, the double decker gift of Elvenkind opened to... Wow, this is a surprise. Two separate prizes. It makes sense since this gift box is technically two gifts strapped together, but this is really generous. 
First item, the elf ears are a standard pair of long ears which make the player look more so like an elf. The ears are compatible with really any item, especially the 11 hats that were required to earn this gift. Bonus points for that. It's a nice standard accessory that matches well with the objective's theme. Second item, the decked out elf acts as a final elf hat reward for those who collected the 11 others. In my opinion, it's not something I really wear since it's pretty gaudy, but I appreciate it when an item completes a whole set piece, with this one in particular acting as the 12th. Overall, this gift hits hard, since it has two good accessories with a really cool box to follow suit. Next, the gift of one Santa opened in two. A Santa for all seasons. Another hat that finishes up a set, this time being way more thematic of an ending, with a hat being labeled for all seasons, sounding like a dramatic conclusion to the 11 Santa hats before it. The hat takes the shape of the original Santa hat, except now not having the RD count in its front and having a sleigh and some reindeers falling above the hat piece, almost like this is a real Santa item the gift's description was hinting at. It's a timeless version of the Santa hat we all know, really making the for all seasons in its name fit well. It looks really nice and perfectly displays the festive fever this event had, being a really good conclusive prize for the event itself. It's kind of strange to think that before this gift explosion, there weren't actually that many festive theme items, but with 2009, there's now Santa hats and elf hats, which spruce up the whole Christmas celebration this event is. Lastly, the stainless steel gift of December 26 opened in two. The 2010 fireworks. Fireworks are a celebratory pastime for whenever something big happens. This firework, for example, is to celebrate the brand new year at the time of 2010, as 2009 was shortly coming to a close. This gear is pretty iconic, as it's well known for its celebratory function being used as a dangerous weapon. The community always finds a way, huh? The firework takes a fixed shape, with the main barrel having a red pattern. Attached to the barrel is a yellow aerodynamic cone, a fuse, and a prod stick, with 2010 written on the barrel in bright yellow. Now, about that dangerous weapon part, fireworks are usually seen in mortars, right? Now, what if you were the mortar? When using the firework, it launched directly upward from your character, then explodes into a dangerous celebratory explosion with shiny studs that appear. The kicker is that the upward launch can be angled to face any direction, as long as the firework cone faces it, meaning people can launch fireworks straight into other people like missiles if they angled it just right. It doesn't help too that the firework has a larger explosion radius than most bomb gears, causing a hilarious view of limbs whenever the firework makes contact with anyone. Leave it to Roblox to make a fun celebration gear into a dangerous comedic war weapon. And that's that, all of Gift Explosion 2009's accessories. It's a really hit and miss for me in terms of prizes, with some prizes feeling out of place or strange. But I'll tell you what mate, the hits really hit hard with some great iconic items that lots and lots of people recognize, coming from this year specifically. My favorites from this batch are probably the legitimate fedora, Santa for all seasons, 2010 firework and elf ears. It's overall a really good batch, with the bad items not really turning the scale negatively. With that done, let's get ourselves into the conclusion. Maybe I did treat Jimmy a little too harshly whilst taking care of him. I did hit him with a chair and fed him to the turkeys. Gosh, no wonder why they pushed me off. I was a total egghead. Hmm. Hey, Treva? How about we make something nice to give to Jimmy? Think of it as a bonding exercise. We'll make something nice for him to unwrap. I'll make the thing inside, you make the box. Is that alright? Alright, let's do it, Wenwood friend. In conclusion, Gift Explosion 2009 is a true evolution to the Gift Explosion formula, introducing lots and lots of new concepts seen in the Gift Objectives, having some really good prizes that aren't too formulaic, and heightening the relationship with Roblox and its community with frequent blog posts and forum talk. It feels strange to think that this event really happened after Gift Explosion 2008, a very similar event to Gift Explosion 2007. Again, it's like it's from another reality or time travel back in time for a future installment. You had stuff like game creation, limited integration, generous thank yous, which really tied this whole event together into a really cool experience. It's difficult, a bit unfair at times, but it still proves to be something of a fun time. Going forward, I hope to see every subsequent Gift Explosion following the steps paved by this one, whilst also fixing some issues that this Gift Explosion had. With all that said, I'm giving this event a generous but realistic 8 out of 10. Mom, 
I had a cool looking hat from Santa. Good job on the gift wrapping, Trifa. I hope he likes it. Hey, Trifa. Merry Christmas.